guys, Jackie, your nerdy crafter here, and for this week, I will transform a drawing into an actual clay sculpture. The origin of this idea came back in December on my vlog channel, Nerdy Jackie. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link for that video down below. I think it was December 11th, and we talked about it in the comment section. So a shout out to Maria Brooke, who actually gave that idea so that I can start this series on my channel. If you want a shout out in my next video, don't forget to hashtag Nerdification Squad in the comment section below within the first 45 minutes of a video's release, or hashtag NerdyCrafter on Instagram with one of your creations. I'm pretty aware that a couple of channels have made that video, but I'll attribute that to the hive mind of the clay community. So, great thinkers, think alike. Great, great minds, think alike. <laughs> with that said, this week's video is a collaboration with Art a la carte. So if you have not seen her channel yet, make sure you check her out. I'll leave a link for her down below, as well as in the iCart section. Her channel has everything from actual videos of her creating original art, to tips and tricks about you as an artist and the materials. She has such a lovely and bubbly personality, so make sure that you do check her out. And she did send me this absolutely gorgeous dragon. And I think, let's try and do it some justice. Upon first glance, I'm like, this is going to be Easy, I got this. I've made way harder pieces, and boy was I wrong. But before we get into the complications, I definitely went for the opal and purple clay. That way it's kind of shiny and kind of looks like scales underwater. Don't be fooled, it took me about half an hour to get these colors mixed together because one of them was Primo, which is hard, and the other one was Sculpey 3, which is soft. For the base, I wanted it heavy, so I used some rocks to put them together. And of course, anytime you're going to be using clay with anything else, including clay, go ahead and use liquid Sculpey to put them together. I, I kind of hit a bit of a roadblock because I didn't think that the dragon was both swerved and curled. So you'll see on the picture here that not only is her body kind of swerved, but her body kind of swerves with... I don't know if I'm making sense, but what I'm trying to say is I'm a little stumped because if I do a wire sticking out of the rock, it really has to be kind of 3D-ish so you can see the swerve here but my worry is that the, because the wire is so slim and her body is really slim she kind of has this eel body you can see it's really slim we, we can't make her too thick so the wire is slim and she's slim which means there's a possibility that she might fall off of the wire now i could be completely technically wrong but that's why i brought the jar so <laughs> this jar it's pretty cute i don't know where it came from but i was thinking maybe i could swerve her make the whole body, swerve her around the jar, and then bake it. So I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to be structurally safe, safe and sound, but I guess I'll try this method. Until I realized that the only jar I had at home was actually way too big for this project. So I am going to be opting for foil paper, so help me the baking gods. Now let's put our dragon together. I decided to start with the body because that was the part that gave me the hardest time and it was kind of the most complicated body twisties I had to do. If I could go back in time, I wish I had not used that flimsy sculpting wire. I wish I had actually used the hardcore, heavy-duty wire that I got from the home hardware store because that would have really made the piece 
stand way more firmly at the end. But alas, I did not think that far. And so because of that, the piece kept falling off because it was too heavy for that wire and I was pretty much forced to glue gun it into the base. The glass domes that you're seeing for the eyes I bought like three years ago from eBay because I really wanted to make plushies with glass eyes and I actually never did that. I don't know why. I actually never had a chance to do it. So I whipped them out and I'm like, I'm gonna use them this time. So I painted them with acrylic paint to make the eyes a little cuter. A little intermission here. I'm inviting you guys to send me your pictures that you want me to turn into clay creations. So go on to Instagram and hashtag nerdycrafter and then put the caption, clay this. And I'll choose one or maybe a couple of them in the next video I decide to do this. That is, if you guys enjoy it, of course. Please avoid hardcore backgrounds. So I would say the most complex it should get is the same one as the one Valerie made for me. So try to keep it the same like this or simpler. And if you don't have Instagram, go ahead and do the same thing, but on Facebook and post it on my Facebook page, Nerdy Crafter. All right, back. Back to work. When you put the eyes in, make sure that they're facing the same direction. We we got a little wonky over there. Let's let's fix that right away. If ever the eyes get dirty because your hands have clay and you kind of touch them. All you have to do is take some rubbing alcohol and a q-tip and clean it up and it's as good as shiny as new. For the arm and hand, all you have to do is make a dumbbell kind of shape where the middle is slimmer and then go ahead and shape the fingers. I am a huge fan of opal clay, but it does have its downsides. And one of the biggest downsides is that the actual glitter, if you can see here, does stick out. So sometimes when you're working on thinner pieces, the glitter might actually try and stick out, so you have two options. If it doesn't want to go in by itself, kind of like these ones over there, you're just going to have to pluck them out and then smooth that area because that's just how it is. I decided to put a wire inside the arm because I didn't want it to be floppy, so it was easier to actually pose it however way I wanted with that wire on the inside. I didn't mention it, but feel free to bake this piece however many ways you want. I baked it about 9 to 10 times to save my progress. It was, it was pretty hard to bake. And even when baking it, I had to put foil paper in every single piece of crevice just to keep it safe and from falling. And I mean crevice on the dragon, uh, not keep your head out of the gutter. Guys, keep it out of the gutter. We're family friendly here. After the final bake, I used a glue gun to stick on the stubborn pieces and with acrylic paint I went ahead and dry brushed everything. The best thing about the wire is we can make it disappear by painting it green since it's going to hide in the foliage.
Done! Ermagad, guys, I just realized that I forgot to put the side fins. So if you look on the picture here, you'll see that the side fins were not put in. I, I just, com they completely, I completely zoned out. I don't know why I forgot. So at the beginning, I was like, don't forget, Jackie, don't forget. And you know what? Jackie forgot because she's a clever one, that one. I really like the way she turned out, but I know that there are some things I really would have liked to work on. And for, so, for example, if we look at the wings here, that little leaf kind of looking thing <laughs> right there, that was just not possible because she was pretty hard to put together. So she really looked extremely fragile and kind of flowy, and the wings had to look like fins. So they were very flowy, so I had to make them as thin as possible, and even the top part up here, I really couldn't get it that thin. There was just no way for me to do that unless I used just exclusively wire. And then I would have had to paint it to match the color, which would have also been challenging, and I'm not sure if it would have... I, I think it would have just stood out a little too much, so I did make them a little thicker. The other thing that was challenging is getting her standing up. So if you see, she really is balancing on both the wire and the tail. So I had to put glue on both of these sides. Even the wire itself, I shouldn't have used sculpting wire because it's quite bendy. I probably should have used the other wire that I have, which I bought at the home hardware store. So overall, I would, I would say I'm pretty happy with the way that she turned out, considering this is the first time I make glass eyes. Do you guys think I did a good job? If so, or if not, let me know in the poll that you will see pop up. Did I do the picture justice? And if I didn't, well, I'll do better next time. So don't forget to hashtag NerdyCrafter with the caption, Clay This. I really had so much fun putting this together. Thank you so much, Valerie, for collaborating with me and taking me up on this idea. Don't forget to check her out. I'll leave all her links in the description box below as well as in the iCard section. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Until then, I will see you in the next video.